biographical paper, my biographical video on Emma Hale Smith. So starting out, background information is she was born to Isaac Hale and Elizabeth Lewis, and she was the seventh child. She, uh, her family owned a boarding house, so it was actually at this boarding house that she met Joseph, Joseph Smith. And there's not really much else that talks about how she was as a child or other things in her childhood, but it did say that she, it did have her characteristics as like now. So she was, is very motherly in nature to young people. She's very drawn to them and she's just so compassionate to them. She's benevolent and hospitable. She is high spirited. And one thing I read was that she always had a house full of people to entertain and be entertained. She was just that house in the block. She just loved to be social. And another huge thing is she is, she is patient, loving, compassionate, and devoted, and she is incredibly faithful. I mean, we, as I was going through learning about her, it just more and more, it, it was just more and more testament of how faithful she was. Despite all the hard things she went through, she was a rock hard woman. <laughs> and her testimony was amazing. So, her life sketch um, she was born in, on July 10th in 1804, born in Whirling Borough Township in Pennsylvania. She, in January 18th, 1827, so she had met. At this boarding house, she had met Joseph, and on January 18th, 1827, she married Joseph Smith, and this was actually actually against her parents' wishes. So her parents, when they met Joseph Smith, um, it was at the time when the vision was going, um, was circling around. He had testified of that, and they were very hesitant about it because they, as well with everybody else, was thinking that maybe he was just not telling the truth, and he wasn't saying... He was saying this to whatever they believed. The, the gist of that was that they actually did oppose that marriage, but I know that she felt like she needed to. Later it talks about she, her mission and calling in life was to be a wife of jo be the wife to Joseph Smith, wife to a prophet, which is incredible now. I can't imagine what it would be like then when he got perse persecuted as much as he did. So... Then in 1828, she assisted Joseph Smith as scribe for the Book of Mormon. And I thought this was super interesting, but during the entire time she was helping him translate, she never once saw the gold plates. So she just was faithful enough to say, I don't need to. I'm helping you with what you need me to help you with, but I don't need to. I'm sure she was curious, so I think it's very interesting that she did that. In January of 1830, she was actually baptized into the church by Oliver Cowdery. So she was baptized in the Church of Jesus Christ. In 1831 to 1832, she lived at John Johnson Home in Hiram in Portland, Portugello, Ohio. Then in 1835, she edited a collection of sacred hymns for the church. So I think that's super cool. She made, or she helped with the hymns that are in her hymn book. Super awesome. And then it was published in 1835. In March of 1842, she was appointed president of Relief Society. So this is actually one thing that she's known as is the first president of Relief Society of Nauvoo. So this was in Nauvoo, first president. And along with that, she also came up with a theme, which I will touch on later as well. Um, in May 1843, she was sealed to Joseph Smith, which is really awesome. Um, Joseph sealed Joseph Smith for eternity. And um, during the time that her and Joseph were married, they were married for 17 years, I think it was. And in that time, they had 11 children, and only five of those children survived. So this is another testimony of her faith to me. I cannot imagine losing that many kids. It would be heart-wrenching. So just another testimony of how strong of a strong in the gospel that she was. I think it's amazing. So then, um, in June 27th, 1844, she, uh, Joseph Smith was murdered. That's when he was murdered. Um, and then in September 1846, she, uh, fled from persecution. So I'm sure there was still persecution going on, which is sad even after her husband died. Her sweet Joseph was, was killed. 
she was still having to get away from the persecution, so she fled to Fulton, Illinois, and returned to Nauvoo in February of 1847. Then in December of 1847, she actually ended up remarrying a man named Louis Crum Bitterman at Nauvoo, and he was able to take care of her and provide her with means that she didn't have before because she, when he, when Joseph passed away, she still had five children that she had to take care of and she was also helping Joseph and taking care of his mom as well. So she was helping all of those and so this, um, Louis Crum, Vitamin, he was able to give her means that helped her take care of these people that she was taking care of, her kids and Louis, Lucy, Lucy Mack as well, Lucy Mack Smith was his mother. And then in February of 1879, um, she gave her last testimony of Joseph Smith, and it was very sweet. Um, it talks about, one of the things that I read talks about how she prayed, I'm sure she prayed all the time of all the things that she went through, but she, there's two accounts in the do, um, Doctrine and Covenants, two accounts that were made to her. Um, one of them was in... DNC 25.5 and she was consoled to use um, so Evan's divine calling or Emma's divine calling was to be the wife of a prophet in this responsibility the Lord said the office of thy calling shall be for a comfort unto my servant Joseph Smith Jr. thy husband this is in DNC 25.5 and then she was counseled to use counseling words in the spirit of meekness with him DNC 25.5 Emma was to cleave to her husband, so her, what she was to do in her life, and her mission, her purpose in life, one of the big things in her life was to be a comforting wife to Joseph. So she was to cleave to her husband Joseph, and to go with him at the time of his going, and be unto him for a scribe. This is GNC 25.6, and in DNC 25.9, it says she was promised that her faithful her, for faithfully fulfilling her calling as his wife, he would support her in the church. He, meaning Heavenly Father, would support her in the church and help her, um, would bless her. And I'm sure this was a big comfort, but also something that was really hard to hear because she went through so much. And I'm sure she always was just waiting for that other, for something to catch a break. You know, she... Her husband died, and then persecution was still following her. So many hard things that happened to her that could have shook her testimony beyond belief. Um, so I find it amazing that she still had such a strong testimony. And then um, in April of 1979, she passed away at Nauvoo. And there's an account of that, somebody in the room with her from the talk. It says, my great-great-grandmother. And they said that they were in the room with her, and when she was laying there in the hospital bed, like nearing her death, she raised her arms up like she was reaching up to heaven and, and said, Joseph. And then she passed away. And so I'm sure in that moment that she was reunited with Joseph Smith. Um, another thing that I had read that was part of just how hard it would have been and how faithful she continued to be, and how much she just relied on Heavenly Father. There's one account in the same talk, and she talks about how um, relatives that would visit, or, or people that were with her a lot, said that sometimes she would go upstairs, or she'd go into a room and seclude herself, and she would just sit and look out the window, and tears would be streaming down her face, and she just she could tell that there was very deep sorrow in her and that she carried with her always. This fear, this sorrow, but that she continued to be faithful. Um, some of her significant moments and contributions, I kind of combined that. I kind of added the significant moments and contributions in there with that. So she was actually in charge of putting together the Word of Wisdom. And it was funny, it actually came about because Joseph, she was kind of disgusted with the tobacco habits of the men that Joseph worked with. So in work, in the meeting houses, like church houses, 
um, the men would be chewing tobacco and they'd spit and it'd get all over the floor and it's just sticky and messy. And so she said, that's it. We're not going to do tobacco. We're, we, that's going to be a part of things. And I think part of that could have been for sure. Um, Honey Folly kind of putting some two cents in there, but it ended up being good because now we use it as a word of wisdom. And it, the studies have proven that tobacco isn't good for you. Another thing is she came up with a really study theme as well as being the president. She also came up with the theme starting forever ago saying charity never faileth. And then in 1840, there was an account that said that she was baptized for a dead relative. So I think that was one of the first accounts that of baptism for the dead uh, or just one account of it was that she was part of that and then um so yes she's done so many amazing things but there have been a few things that um people have been i feel like with her name you either get really good oh my gosh she's an incredible lady or you get really bad like we should not be having her in our church building we should not be talking about her at all and one of those is because um, when, when everybody was leaving to go to go west, to go west, to go to Utah and to travel to better places, she stayed behind. And a lot of people were like, oh, why would you do that? But um, there have been accounts that said that she was just scared for her children. She was scared that she didn't know what was for the future for them. And so to protect them and her, she stayed behind. So that's one of the things and there's so much that we don't know about her and, and what she was thinking in those moments so it's I think it's so important that we don't judge or we don't say those things and then also the other thing was plural marriage so even Justice Smith said he didn't like it but plural marriage she was not comfortable with it and a lot of people get at her for that because there have been many accounts and not all of them there's not really a definitive one that tells us but one of them said that she um, never even said anything about plural marriage. There was another one where she hid out or lashed out. There was a, just a few different accounts, and so we don't actually know what happened with that. But something that we still need to keep in mind is that we all have things that we struggle with and commandments that Heavenly Father has put in place for us or things that he's told us that we need to do that we don't feel comfortable with. We don't like that we have to do it and sometimes we may make a mistake in that or we may react in a way that's not very good but I mean I know that she probably wasn't comfortable with that and may have wavered a little bit in her faith that would be a hard thing we, we all go through things that may shake our faith and so it's one thing that I've just kept in mind is it's not an easy thing. Not everything that Heavenly Father commands us is going to be easy for us to do. Um, a few of her other contributions was that in 1843, she actually organized a visiting committee. And that was kind of the beginning of visiting teaching. So she was kind of our example to that and how we should do that. Um, and then um, the last thing that I wanted to talk about her, I think just something that I've learned from her overall is just she never denied the church. Even if she stayed behind, even if she made these, um, you know, she made mistakes, we all do, but she never once denied the church. She never stopped believing in Heavenly Father and this gospel. She knew it was true. It's why she stuck with Joseph Smith. It's why she continued to be a faithful wife and continued to help him despite how hard it was. To see him be tar vetted, how hard it was to see his name be thrashed about, his reputation ripped to shreds. She stayed and she committed and she was incredible. And I will forever be grateful for her and forever be such an example to me that despite hard things, in spite of that, and the Heavenly Father is there for us. And that. If we just continue to do what we're supposed to, he'll bless us and we'll be happy.